the Kabbalah teaches that the purpose of the universe is to accommodate the possibility of freedom. The manifestation of freedom. And the manifestation of freedom means I have the freedom to choose evil, I have the freedom to choose good. Now, a good that hasn't been chosen is really good, you know? An animal that's been um, tamed, uh, trained to, to, I don't know, lick your hand or bring your newspaper, didn't do a good act. He's being programmed like a computer. The extraordinary godliness of a human being is that we can choose to good, do good, but if we weren't able to choose evil, then we couldn't choose good. If we were, if, I, if I'm not able to choose to hate you, then I don't really love you. So the possibility of evil is actually the why we're here. I know that's an amazing idea, but that's what the Kabbalah teaches. The whole idea of the Tzimtzum was to create a space so that there's a possibility for evil, which then sets the stage of the possibility of an incredible supreme form of goodness that is born out of choice. And that's the risk of this game called Planet Earth, that people can really choose evil and really choose goodness. Now, after such evil has been chosen by people, we now take the opportunity to choose even more goodness, to realize how bad it can get and turn that around to how good we can actually make it. So a lot of what you're talking about sounds like utopian ideals. Right. You know, I can, I can see a lot of people watching the movie say, well, isn't that lovely, you know, la-di-da. That's what the 60s was trying to do, to make everybody flower children. So there's a little bit of an ultimate idealistic undertone to what you're saying. Um, and that's the cynical New Yorker part of me that says that. I can't help it, right. you know. Uh, so how do you address that and how do, we, how do we explain to people really what the vision ultimately is and if we can all just taste it, we can all live it? Yeah. I think it goes back to the um, idea that deep inside we know what we want, but we have picked the wrong way to get it. And worse than that, we started to think that the way to get it was what we really wanted in the first place. We confused the money, which was the wrong ticket to freedom, but we actually now think it's all about the money. And so it's not the ticket to freedom, and now we even think it's actually the goal in the first place. The goal is utopia. What is utopia? It's utopia. It's being you. Everybody here, they just want to be themselves. That's what we want. Now, when do I feel the happiest? When I can be totally me. You know, that's what I want to be. As I mentioned, if I were a toaster, when would I be happy? When I make toast. <laughs> oh, would I be happy if I were making toast? So why am I not happy? Because I think I'm a CD player, I'm trying to burn CDs, and I'm not trying to make toast, so I'm really in pain. Utopia is when you are experiencing your true self. That's all we want. That's all we want. But, but who are you? You are a part of me. And who are we? We're a part of them. So for you to be you, you need me to be me, and we need them to be them. What, what does that really mean? It means we need to try and help each other be authentic with who we really are. And our Torah teaches us that we are rays of, expressions of, we are souls. We are someone. We are some of the one. And the more we can affirm our unique expression of godliness, the happier 
not only I will be, but we will be. Because if you're not doing your part, then I can't do mine. And if we're not doing our part, they can't do theirs. And if they're not doing theirs, we can't do ours. Because we're all part of this organic whole that is completely interconnected. It seems like we need just a total rebranding of consciousness in our world. It's the, the, the key is clarity. Just, just get clear. Who are we? Why are we? And what can we become?